Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming on such a early Saturday morning. I wasn't sure how many people will get out of bed for my first presentation here, but I'm glad to see you all here. Today we're going to talk about uh, my heritage family tree, all the different things and all the different ways you can work with it. My name is Uri Gonen, it's an Israeli name. I'm originally from there. And I'm a senior vice president of product management, senior because I've been working in the company for 18 years now, since prehistoric times when I looked like this. This is um, a picture of me using AI Time Machine, which is a feature that we released a few months ago, which allows you to take photos of yourself and we place you in, in, uh, pre in historic times. This is prehistoric. We have many different filters, uh, Roman times, Greek time, Vikings, 60s, 70s, you name it. So I urge you to go to the booth after the presentation and get a printout, which I have here on my lanyard, and I walk around with it and everybody is like, wow, who is this guy? Um, as mentioned before, please silence all your phones. We don't need any, uh, anybody buzzing their phones, no audio, uh, but photos, absolutely take as many as you want. So my heritage does a lot of things. Uh, a very high level overview, we have a family tree where you can build and record your family history and we're going to talk about that today. We also have a lot of uh, features around family photos like the one we saw, the, the AI time machine. A lot of features around that uh, which we're not going to cover today. Um, lots of historical records where you can search censuses, uh, newspapers and so on and how they connect to the family tree using matches. And we have, of course, DNA. We do a DNA ana analysis. We give you a lot of information regarding that. So today, we're talking about the family tree. Um, you can build a family tree on my heritage for free. Um, lots of the features that I'm going to show you here are really free. Um, some of them require subscription, but uh, go ahead and everything that I'm basically showing here is available to anyone. So when you sign up for MyHeritage, you can start a tree from scratch, you can import a, a GEDCOM, of course, and if, if also if you're an LDS member and you're on Family Search, you can import your tree into MyHeritage directly. So our main menu, family tree, there's many different options, but if you just click on family tree, you will get to your family tree. And it has many different views and different ways to work with it. We'll start with, and there's actually more options here, maps and other tools that we're going to go over now. So the first way and the standard way to work with your tree is what we call the family view. So here is my tree, a portion of my tree here, in the family view. And we see here at the top that there's, it shows family view and there's other views that we will go over later and see their advantage. So in the family view, it tells me that I'm looking at the tree of myself centered in it and here I am over here. We can see that each person has a card that has some information about this person. And I see here that at this point I have uh, 1,500 and so people in my tree, but the view currently shows a small part of them. A lot of them are, are not visible right now and we'll see how you can go and navigate the tree. Um, let's go and zoom in at cards. You can see that each person has their name, birth and death information, the picture, and um, all these little funny icons. So what are they? These are matches. So once you build a tree, immediately we start matching you using other trees and historical records, and we give you matches, which are hints about more information that you can find about your family. So we have here, in this case, we have uh, three different icons. The magenta ones are DNA matches. So if you took a DNA or you took a DNA for a relative of yours and, and did it for them, you will be able to access it directly from the tree. 
The green icons are for what we call smart matches, which are matches to other trees on my heritage that in, have the same people, that we believe are the same people. And the brown icons are what we call record matches, which are matches to historical records or trees that are not on my heritage, such as the Family Search tree, the Genie tree, which is a sister company of ours, and other such smaller trees. Um, also, we have, uh, if a person here has a birthday or has an upcoming birthday, or there's also ones for anniversaries, you will see indications of that in the tree, which helps you identify that and even send them a greeting right from here. Um, at the bottom right, we have the navigation area where you can zoom in and zoom out, a full screen, uh, go back to the home person if you started navigating and lost your way. So this is a good way to do that from here. So let's, for example, zoom in and you can see that I can show smaller cards, but more of the tree. In this case, because the cards are so small, if I hover over each one of them, it'll show me more information so I can quickly find people this way. So as we said, we're looking at a tree that only shows 88 people, and where are all the other people? So we have, in this case, this is my wife, and I have a large portion of the tree of her branch of the tree, and so on for other people. And so you will see over a card this little mini branch, or like a propeller head, over the card, which says that there are hidden more people. So if I click here, I will get to see now her family. So her parents, brother, and so on and so on, all the part of the tree that shows her. And you can see now at the top, it says that we're now looking at her tree. And I can, it's kind of a breadcrumb, so I can go back to the previous person. And it shows me that there are now different people that are shown in the tree. So this way I can navigate and go into all the different branches of the tree that I have made. Um, if I select a person in this view, this is my grandmother, a detailed panel will open up on the left showing all the information about that person, almost all the information. Here I can see that her full name, I can see that it's my grandmother, I can see a little blood, two blood drops saying that it's a blood relative. This is a new feature that we just added to help you distinguish between blood relatives and people that are not blood relatives. More information about her. I can scroll down and see more facts and everything about her. And I can click here either on this pencil on the card or on the pencil icon on the panel and immediately edit and add more information about her. So this will open up a little window that allows me to enter all the information, all the basic information about that person names, information about birth, death, and information about marriage to her spouse. And if I want more, I can click at the bottom on the more information. It'll go to a different part where I can add all the information, but I'm not going to go over that here. As I said before, if you scroll down in the panel, it shows you more information, all the facts. We saw the, the, some of the photos also at the top, and I can go to see all the photos. But here, let's look at facts. This one is occupation, for example. And I can click each one of those facts and edit them in the same way. I can also add new facts from here. And this is her, her occupation. We own a bakery. Yes, I had free cakes and uh, tea until we sold it. Um, OK, so this one, we talked about how to edit inf information about a person. But of course, we also want to add more people to the tree. This is why we're, we're doing our research. So if you have here a person, this is an ancestor of mine, and I'm missing her parents. And I can, we, it shows you that these people are missing, ancestors, father and mother. And I can click on this empty card called Add Father, which will open a little window asking me what is the information about her father. Name, 
dates. Uh, I will mark this person as deceased, obviously, and it will open information about his death. And I can add him to the tree. And I can go on and add people this way. I can also add people through other mechanisms, and I'll show you as well. Um, but I can also add relatives that are not parents. So here, under a card, we have a plus section, and also in the details panel, we have the add button, which will open, in this case, um, kind of a mini tree around her of all the missing relatives. In this case, she already had a father, so we can't add him. But a mother, another spouse, children or siblings directly from here. So let's add a daughter. And it will open a similar window that we saw before about information about her daughter. So I can, this is the standard way for people to enlarge their family tree based on information that they know. So we looked at how to get to other people through branches of the tree. But of course, if you know who you want to get to, instead of looking to see where they are, you can, of course, start typing their name in the search area. And it'll start showing you people that match whatever you typed, so either first name or last name or um, married name. And it'll show you people that match this. And you select the right person. Let's select the second one. And it'll jump to the part of the tree where they are the main person. So here they are. This is the card of that person and information about that person. And he is a stepfather of, a, of an ancestor of mine, so he doesn't have the blood relative indication here. Um, and we see here that we're looking at this person's tree and not my tree. Another thing that we see here is that we have, instead of the just regular add father, add mother cards, we actually found information that we think is his parents and a whole branch of people that can be added to the tree using the smart matches and record matches technologies that we have, linking that person and potential parents of his from other family trees. So if I hover over this, it will explain what that is. And if I go and click, it'll tell me that it found all these people and I can add them if I choose to, directly to my tree. So this is another way to add more people to your tree. Let's look at the relationship again. So sometimes I will get to somebody and the relationship is not that clear. You can see here a very complicated relationship. Um, my wife's second cousin's father-in-law's cousin's ex-husband's grandfather. <laughs> so. I don't even know who this person is, and the reason that he is here is because I actually can invite other people to my family tree, uh, other relatives of mine. Uh, usually you'd have like, your parents, if you have them alive, uh, siblings, nephews, cousins. I invited at some point a lot, and they started adding their part of the tree that I'm not even aware of and who they are. So here we can actually click on this relationship. This is something that we added not long ago, and it'll show you how this relationship looks like. So from me, my wife's cousin's wife, and this one, and it shows me the entire path. And I can go and understand this relationship really nicely. So this is very useful for complicated relationships. Let's continue. So uh, let's look at a few interesting examples that are highlighted here. You can see that these people have this little uh, plus uh, times two icon next to them. And this happens when sometimes uh, certain people are, um, appear in the tree more than once. And this happens because this couple here that lived long ago, my ancestors, were actually a uncle and niece who were, who were married. So his parents and her grandparents are the same people. So they appear twice in the tree. Him and his brother, his brother is her, fa her father. So we have that situation. Of course, this messes up all the DNA analysis and so on. And we, we heard about that yesterday. 
And you can see here, if I click on one of those icons, it'll show me that this, here it's really simple because they're really close by in the tree, but sometimes it could be, this is from my father's line and this is from my mother's line far away, and it'll kind of show me that the two people are the same. A little bit more advanced things that you can do here. Um, we have this dot dot button, which opens up more things that you can do. And here it opens a menu. You can go and view this person's tree, where they are the middle, the, the, the root person, and a few other things. Um, for example, there is this connect to existing person. This is how actually you would do, create the situation where two people that are already in the tree, the uncle and the niece, you want to say that they're also married. So you would do that using the connect to existing person. Open it and you say, um, select uh, a spouse who is already in the tree and you would start typing their, her name. She would appear there and you'd say okay and that's how you would create two cousins or an uncle and a niece who are also married. Another thing that you can do here from, the, from this menu is to start adding adoptions. So sometimes you have people who have uh, biological parents and adoptive parents that you want to add both to the tree and you would do it from here. Um, in this case, there is already um, biological parents. You can switch it to adoptive parents and you can also add other types of parents. And this is how it would look like in the Harry Potter example who has adoptive parents and biological parents. And in this case, the mother, the, the adoptive mother and the biological mother is, are also sisters, even more complicated. So you will need to use the uh, connect to existing person and, and all these techniques that we looked at before. A few more things about the tree is that you can also control the number of generations that the tree is looking at. So we can do five plus is the most, so you will see um, five generations above you, below you, and a lot of uncles and cousins and siblings and so on. But you can reduce that, and you can also um, remove cousins in case that you want to make the tree even smaller. If you want to kind of get a good idea of a certain part of the tree without all the ancestors and making everything far away. And in this case, I am selecting one, for example, and it shows me a very small tree, very focused, without a lot of distractions. So that helps me um, understand how the family tree looks like in, in more details without seeing so many people. Um, at the top right, we also have this uh, gear icon, which will open up uh, details of settings that you can um, control the tree. Lots of different things, how you would show names, how, you know, whether these kinds of icons that appear here appear or not. I'll go over a few of them. There's a lot to talk about here. Uh, let's talk about um, these three options. So one of them is uh, show these black ribbons, and these are the little triangles above um, deceased people that show that they're deceased. You can turn it on and off. Some people like that, some people don't. Uh, there is also a color coding based on gender that you can turn on. This is actually um, an older design that we had in the past, which is still available if you want to um, highlight who is uh, male and who is female. And also the vertical cards. This is another option. You can put the names below the, the pictures and this will make um, the screen. You can put more people horizontally but less vertically. So up to you if you like this kind of design or that kind of design. And you can play with all the options that we have. They're uh, quite extensive. And a new feature that we just announced uh, yesterday at RootStack is the color coding based on the branch of the tree of, of ancestors. So you get to it from the little palette icon that appears in the navigation menu. If you turn it on, uh, it'll, if you click it, it'll open this and explain the different colors. So we have four colors for the different ancestral branches. The father's father's line will be blue. 
the father's mother will be green, father, mother's father is red, and mother's mother is yellowish orange, and descendants are in purple. So if I opt in to use these colors, I will see a tree like this. So here is myself and my father, mother, and their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents all in these colors. So this will make it easy for you to kind of identify which branch of the tree you're looking at. And when you do that, it also, if you now visit other family trees that are, you're doing your research about that are not yours, the colors will also help you identify um, the branches of the tree there, especially with trees that you don't really know who this family is. Um, as I mentioned, we have this new blood drop as well that shows you that a person is a blood relative of yours. So this is an aunt who is actually related to me. There could be an aunt which is a wife of an uncle and that would have no blood drop there. So going a little bit into the DNA because uh, the tree appears there as well. So here is my DNA matches. I took a DNA test. There's lots of people here that I'm related to. So if I go to one of them here and want to view that person's tree to understand how we could be related, and I have color coding on, so I can see now the color coding, not how they're related to me, but how they are related to the DNA match. So I can see, okay, these are her parents, these are her grandparents, and. Uh, great-grandparents and so on, and I can see whether which side of the tree of her they are. So this is a very helpful feature that uh, allows you to identify and understand a tree that is not even yours. And I can also see relationships to the DNA match and how exactly for each person, how they are related. And also if I look at a person who doesn't have a, uh, a blood drop there in the relationship, I know that that person isn't related genetically to my DNA match, so probably not important for my DNA research because they're not even related to them genetically. So to summarize the main uh, family view, it uh, shows a person and their related family around them. Um, easy to navigate to other branches of the tree, as we showed, and it focuses really on adding more people. That's that's where you would use it the most. And the new color coding feature that we introduced that I talked about today. Let's move on to the next view of the tree, which is the pedigree view. You get to it from the top right, selecting the pedigree view. And here we see a traditional view where it focuses on a person and only their ancestors. So no spouse or brothers and sisters and cousins really focus on exactly how this person came to be. So this is me and my ancestors and what I have in my tree. Um, again, just like before, if you click a person, this is my uh, grandmother, so it shows me yellow because it's mother's mother. And again, just like we saw in the family view, the same functionality of the details panel on the left. Um, and it shows six levels of ancestors, but if you want to see more, it has these uh, arrows that shows you that you have more. The white ones will say that there are ancestors there, more, and the ones that are gray will basically allow you to add them. So let's expand one of them here. Um, that famous branch that we looked at before with the uncle and niece marrying, so here we see it in the pedigree view. And again, we see the X2 indication that shows that her parents, her grandparents and his parents are the same people. And I can click here again and show even more branches though, so you can expand the tree like this to show more generations of ancestors. So to summarize the pedigree view, uh, a lot of it is the same, it's just that the layout is different and it shows a person in the tree and only their ancestors. Uh, focus on the history of a particular individual. When you're looking at a tree of a DNA match, this is actually the default view because it's very helpful because it focuses exactly on what you're looking at. 
Wonderful. So we looked at the family view and the pedigree view, and we also have a fan view. The fan view, this is my son and his fan chart. So it's very similar uh, in functionality, really, to the pedigree view because it shows a person and their ancestors only, but it shows it in a radial chart that is really more, more compact, and it's also nice to print and nice to share because it looks really nice and it has the colors. The fan chart actually had the colors long ago, and this is the colors that we now also uh, made available in the family view and the pedigree view. So here I have my son and his six degrees of ancestors. So from my wife's side and from my side, I can show up to 10 generations. And I can see all the places where there's plus is where I don't have yet ancestors. And I can easily add, just like I did in the pedigree view and in the family view, the same functionality applies here. And it has two modes. One is the mode that we saw before, where it shows the colors only as a hint and the names of the ancestors. But the second option is when you click on this palette icon, it just switches mode, where it only shows colors without the names. If you hover over each one of them, it will show you who this person is. But this is just to show um, where there are people, the different colors that we see here. Here it actually goes into eight colors. It kind of shows on the third level of ancestors, distinguishes in, in different variations of the blue and the green and the red and the yellow. So it's even uh, nicer. And it shows the eight ancestral surnames of this person, so of his great grandparents. Uh, we also add functionality to share this because we thought this is very nice and uh, visually, and people like to kind of brag about that. So we did that for uh, social media. As in the other views, if you click any person in the chart, it will open up the detailed panel, and you can do all the things that you did on all the other views. So it's the exact same thing. Uh, so to summarize, the fan view shows a person just like in pedigree view, and it's visually appealing and more compact because we can put everything really in the rectangle of the screen. There's two modes of text and color, and you can share it uh, on social media easily. The list view, this is the last view of the tree available from the top area there by clicking list view. And as its name applies, it basically shows you a list of all the people in your tree and allows you to search and filter and sort by different criteria. So here I am and my family, the, sort, the default sorting order will be by the relationship, by how far these people are from me. So I see myself first, children, parents, spouse, then brothers, sisters, and then second level, grandparents, and so on and so on as you scroll down. Here I'll scroll down and you see that I'm listing uh, the first 100 people and I can paginate and go to more and more people in the tree as a list. Uh, just like in the other views, if I click a person, and by the way, you see these little blue icon next to the relationship, that's the same colors that we saw in the uh, other views appearing here as well. So anybody who is an ancestor, if you turn colors on, will have a color, and blue means that this is from my father's father's line. So that's helpful here as well. Clicking here, again, the same detail panel, and you can do all the operations that we looked at before, edit, add facts, um, all the, the advanced techniques that we looked at before are available in this view as well. And the indication of matches, smart matches, re record matches appear here as well. There's ways to sort, so like the default sorting order, as I mentioned before, is by relationship, but you can also sort by names, by dates. Here I have the tree sorted by birth date, so I can see at the top all the people who have a birth date that is very, very uh, way in the past, appearing first, my ancestors of six and seven generations above me. 
I can also sort by name. I can sort here. I sorted by name, and it actually is some a way of identifying duplicates. If you have people with the same name and the same date, that's a sign that maybe there are appearing more than once in the tree, and you should remove one, copy some. We are planning, hopefully next time I'm in RootStack or maybe after, to have more uh, tools for helping you identify duplicates and dealing with them. So that's planned. Um, you can filter by first letter of the surname. So here I am, all the people starting with L, and I'll show you soon different ways to filter as well. Uh, searching. Searching appears here at the top, very similar. Here you have to type in something and hit enter, and it'll just filter the list based on the name. So here I have all the people that their first name is David or their last name includes Davidson or anything of that nature. But I can also be more specific, and if I want to search only for first name or only for last name, I can do that from here. Other ways to filter the trees, we have more advanced ways to filter, but the way to access them is actually today through the to this family statistics page. So the family statistics page, I actually have a small lecture about it in the booth later this afternoon, is uh, available that shows you all the different ways to look at your trees, more kind of high level ones, and the relationships page in the family statistics area shows you different um, types of relationships that you have in the family tree to you. So for example, here I can click on ancestors on this chart. That shows me that I have 49 ancestors in my tree. And you click here and it takes you to the list view that we saw before with a more specific filter of only ancestors. From that page, you have many different ways I can have, um, I can look at only my father's branch, or only my wife's branch, or only my cousins, or only my second cousins. There's many different ways to filter from the family statistics page to get into the list view with more specific filters. So to summarize the list view, it lists all the people in the tree, allows you to sort and filter and search uh, in many different ways, and it's a good way to spot duplicates as well as we mentioned. All that I looked at here, we looked at the desk, desktop view, but this is also available in the, um, if you are using your phone. So all of this, the family view, the pedigree view, the fan chart, the list view are available also through your phone and also through your app, if you have the mobile app, except for the fan view that is still not available there, they're all accessible through the mobile app as well. Let's look at the more advanced things that you can do. So we looked at really the family view and the four different uh, tabs that are there for uh, different ways to kind of look at the tree. Let's look at a few more things. We also have a timeline view, which is available from the menu here by clicking on timeline. It says here new, but that's a screenshot from, from a few months ago. It doesn't have this new anymore. We always have new things, so we have to unnew older things that we had in the So the timeline view. The timeline view shows um, the same information that the pedigree view will show. It's yourself or anybody that you choose and their ancestors. But here we are showing it in a timeline. So each person takes um, the horizontal space of his lifespan. If you are alive, then you, you know, hit the end here of uh, 2023, this point, and uh, all the people that are deceased will appear where they are in the timeline. So here, again, the same colors that we are using everywhere are also applicable in the timeline view. And here I have myself, I'm looking at three generations only, so I can see all the colors. Uh, and my mother is still alive, my father passed away, and here is where he, when he lived. And you can see the kind of pedigree view but showing it span, spanning um, in the timeline. Here I can see four generations, so I can see more colors and things are starting to be bigger 
and um, more interesting. What do we see here in this view? If I hover over a person, I can see when exactly he was born and when he deceased. I can see ages of all the people of when they, how old they were when they died or how old they are today if they're alive. And I can see those lines connecting between a person and his parents. And I can see the age of the parent, how old he was when the child was born. So this gives me a good indication of the timeline of my family. Here is the ages of deceased people. Here is the age of a living person. And here is the age of how old my father was when I was born. Uh, of course, this is great if you have dates for everybody, but obviously you don't, especially if you go back in time. So here is a situation where I actually don't know when my uh, ancestor here, great-grandmother, was born. So we're just doing a guesstimate based on the ages of her children, of ages of her husband, and when she probably got married. So there's some fuzzy logic that takes into account many different things and tries to place her on the timeline in kind of a fading way because we don't really have a hard date. So we do that for anybody who we don't know when they were born or when they died and we know they died just so we can place them roughly where they probably should be. Um, as I mentioned, you can do four generations, you can do up to um, nine generations. So here I have with eight generations, so we're starting to see like um, bigger areas of the same color because there's more people from that branch. This is my uh, father's mother's side, and here in the red is, as we said, my mother's father's side. Um, one thing that the, this timeline can actually spot is issues with your family tree, what we call consistency issues, and I'll show you soon uh, the tool that does that, but we're using that kind of idea to uh, spot problems with your tree. Here is an example of a uh, father who had a son born way after he died. You see that the connector between the father and the son actually appears after they passed away. So you immediately see it. It's actually spotted in a red little dot that says this is probably an issue that you should fix. There is a few settings that the timeline has. You can see here that you can make the um, a few things. You can also make the uh, bars a bit bigger. And we'll look at that. We also have these um, uh, hashed areas in the, tr in the timeline that, that are about uh, historical events that probably are related to your family. We only did very general ones like world wars, the civil war, and things of that nature. So you can kind of see that these people lived at during the war, or you can see here that two of my ancestors died uh, during World War II but, and the Holocaust. Uh, with bigger cards, you can do that as well, where you can see the dates of the person right in the cards, that you can see less people, but you can see more information about them. So this is the timeline. What else do we have here? Uh, we mentioned the consistency issues that we found in the tree. Well, we have an actual tool called the consistency checker, which uh, you can run on all the people in the tree. We, in fact, run it for you if you imported a GEDCOM file or a, a tree from Family Search. And we also run it every now and then in the background and send you emails about consistency issues that we found in the tree. So if you go there and start it, it can take um, a few seconds or minutes if your tree is really big. And it will find all these issues for all the people in your tree that we think are problems from either major problems, like a person was born uh, after they died because you got the dates wrong, or a, a person's child was born after they died or before they were born, all kinds of things that you can have because you imported a tree or because you entered things incorrectly. These are, there are many different things that we check, like we said, like terrible errors or just warnings that we think mm, a person who is uh, 
on 130 and is still alive, which is obviously a, an issue. And even smaller things, like a person tagged in a photo after they have died, maybe that's okay, maybe that's not okay. Um, siblings with the same name, things of that nature that can indicate problems. A, a person with a, a, a woman with a maiden name, which is also her married name, so maybe you entered it in the wrong place, things of that nature. So let's look at a few more things. Uh, a few more ways to look at your tree. Uh, we also have the pedigree map, which is a geographic representation of your family tree. Um, on the left here, you see all the different locations that we identified on the map in your family tree. And here they are on the map, and I can filter it. In this case, I'm looking at, oops, sorry. I'm looking at um, my ancestors and where they were born only. And I can see here all the different places that I have entered information about my ancestors' birthplace, and we identified where they are. You can see in Eastern Europe, we can see in, um, in Israel some, in what was Palestine at the time, before the state of Israel. The, so you can do a lot of things here. We can find issues as well, potentially, of places that don't make sense or are ambiguous. So this is a, a great tool for your geographic research. We also have uh, charts and books that you can print. So if you want to print your tree, or if you want to print a report about your tree, go here to charts and books. And there's different charts that you can print, different layouts, uh, and with different information, different, lots of templates, and you can customize it down to the font and the background picture and a lot of these things. So this is a great tool as well. Good, I'm glad I... Uh, finished on time, and don't forget to uh, rate this session in the RootStack app. Fill out the survey, let us know how it was. Um, a few announcements just for um, bookkeeping. Um, we have DNA kits at an amazing low price of only $39 for RootStack. Uh, if you have taken a DNA test elsewhere, you can upload it for free to MyHeritage here and in RootStack. And we have 50% off all uh, subscriptions to our plans for all the advanced features. Uh, we have an, ex an extensive knowledge base in our website with a lot of information about what you learned here in the other sessions and much, much more. And we have a share your story uh, Volkswagen minivan where you can uh, give us your story and, and create a nice memory. And we have new podcasts that are available as well. And that's it. Thank you very much. We have a lot of time for questions. So if anybody wants, I'm here. Yes. Yeah, so you can have more than one tree or more than even family site, which we call, that has the tree and the photos and all the different tools together. So you can have more than one, and we have many um, users that are managing more than one family tree, more than one family site, either because it's different versions of the same tree or they're doing research for other people, so we support that for sure. If you have two different versions of the same tree, one that you started on MyHeritage, and one that you're importing from somewhere else. Um, no, we don't really have a way to reconcile them into one tree. If you have a uh, tree on family search, as I mentioned before, and you want to bring that over, then yes, it will synchronize back and forth. And so any changes that you made on MyHeritage, and then when you opt to sync, 
it will bring all the information back into family search and anything new from family search into my heritage so that's the one thing that we do support in that area yes So it will show them on the tree. So any, if you bring a tree and you manage that tree, so all the living people and deceased people like I saw here are there. Um, the, the difference between living and deceased is that the deceased people, unless you choose to opt out, are also searchable for other users on MyHeritage. So if they do a search for a deceased person in your tree, they will find it as a search result and they will be able to um, view that information. Living people that are in your tree are not searchable, so nobody outside of your family tree and whoever you specifically invited will have any information about them. Yes? So yeah, for family search, it's... Um, you don't actually have to download it. You just basically say, I want to join the, this sync. And what it would do, it will bring over uh, eight generations of ancestors above you, only up to eight. Anything above that, it will not bring. So it has to create a certain boundary of what we bring. So eight generations above you. And of those ancestors, some of their descendants as well. So your uncles and aunts, great uncles, and their children, and certain amount of that, and of course your descendants and brothers and sisters and so on. And it will bring any uh, memories where those people are tagged in. So any, any pictures on family search where those people that we're bringing in are mentioned, so those, those uh, photos will be brought in as well. Uh, yeah, we don't support that. So we have to draw the line at some point. Otherwise, everybody will just suck in the entire family search tree into my heritage a hundred times over. We don't really want that. I mean, we'd love to have the, uh, all the information, but I don't think that's, that's the, the nature of the, of the business. Yes. Yes, so as I mentioned before, um, if, you build, if you start a family tree, you can then invite other people to work with you. Um, so basically, they become my heritage members as well, and um, they can log in, and then they will be part, they could collaborate on the same tree as you. So you can make them into all, um, people that help you do their research. Um, you can, there's two levels of memberships in a, in a site. You can be a site manager, like yourself, but you can also make other people site managers. So they will see a lot of the functionality of the only site manager can do, like uh, look at matches, or you can just be um, a member who contributes to the tree but doesn't do the genealogy work as well. Yes? Yes, yeah, so we, it's for free uh, during the uh, root stack. Uh, you, you go to uh, Ancestry, and there is a way there to download the DNA test. If you go to the booth, somebody will explain, and you can do it there. Um, so it's a, it's a file that you can export. And every uh, vendor that has DNA test has to provide a way for the customers to just export it and leave if they want, because it's their data. So Ancestry provides that, and then it's a, basically a file that you can then upload to MyHeritage, kind of like GEDCOM, but for DNA. And then we uh, will analyze it and find matches based on that. So, yeah. But if you go to the booth, we, we can help you there. Yes, question. Um, at some point, we had something like that, a health tree, 
but uh, it's not available anymore. I'm not sure exactly why. Um, so maybe somebody at the booth can help you with that. So we definitely allow you to capture the cause of death, and a lot of people do that. Um, but we don't have, to my knowledge, any tools that analyze any health information about that. Yes? If I understood you correctly, do you, does it cost to upload uh, DNA results to my heritage from Ancestry or 23andMe? Uh, during the during root stack, we'd, we're uh, giving it for free. Uh, after that, I, we might actually have it. We, at some point, we, we did have it at a very low cost, but uh, as of today, you can do it for free. But then if, when you upload it, some of the features, some of the advanced features of the DNA analysis, will, you'll have to pay some extra bit, which I'm not sure how much at this point it is. Yes, great. Yes, so in the example that I showed you here, I filtered it only to birth locations, but it works also with death locations, marriage locations. Even if you have a photo with a location and a person tagged in the photo, you can also add that as well. So yeah, it does work with more locations, more different types of events, yep. Yes? Yeah, so if you have a DNA test for yourself and for your mother, and like I had here actually in the example before, I had the same thing. I gave my father a DNA test, and so both of those are different results, and we get somewhat different results. Many of those DNA matches are for both of us, so I would know, which is actually helpful because then I know that a certain match that I get, if they're also matched to my father, very likely that it's from my father's side. And if it's not matched to my father, I would more likely assume that it's matched from my mother's side, right? Uh, but we, you definitely see, in, when you, we'll go to the booth later on and people will show you how um, you get different results for different people, and, but you can have one family tree and you know that your mother is this person in the tree and yourself is this person in the tree and then Everything should work perfectly with one family tree. Yes? Uh, going back to the maps, um, is it a current map or is it a map uh, like for if you're looking for the birth years and the location, is the map current or does it show the names when they were born? So, the, yeah, the map itself is just the Google Maps functionality, so it would show, on the map itself, it would show you names that how they currently are and not how they were at any given point. And that's an issue that borders change, countries change. So when I have something that is now considered Poland, maybe at the time it was actually Russia, and, and so on. So yeah, we, we, the map itself just shows how it is today. It, we don't have historical maps with historical names, but we do have some capability of knowing a certain place that doesn't exist and where it, what it is called now. So that, from that perspective, there is some functionality. But the maps themselves are current maps. They're not our maps even, they are just Google Maps. Yes, one last question. It's something that we were thinking about, but at this point, it's actually not on the table, unfortunately, for, for the next year. 
Okay, room for one last question. Yes. Yes, there is no tool at this point for merging, but we are going to work on it um, in the next year. So you need to make sure you, got, you bring all the citations before you delete. Yes, and any information that you don't have, we just manually copy. So it's tedious, and we're definitely listening to you and many other users that want this functionality. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it, and please go to the app and rate, rate this session.